Eileen, another question that we hear all the time, it's after surgery. What should we expect? People are always asking, is there a new study out there that I can participate? What are the new treatments? Patients read, the family members read, and they know that outcomes and the prognosis, it's not the best. Can you comment a little bit on what's out there in the future? What are we offering now and what can we offer that it's novel and different? Yeah, so all good questions. So for a person with a localized pancreas cancer where they've undergone successful surgery, once they've recovered from the immediacies of the operation, mm -hmm. we will recommend post-operative therapy. That's called adjuvant therapy. And again, the goals here are to maximize the chances of the cancer not coming back and to deal with any microscopic cells that could have spread, but we can't see on the best imaging tools that we have. So the main uh, treatment recommendations would be chemotherapy, and a commonly used drug is a drug called gemcitabine, which is FDA approved for the treatment of pancreas cancer. And that medication has been shown to decrease the risk of recurrence. Uh, for those that in whom the cancer may be destined to come back, it's also been shown to delay the time mm -hmm. to recurrence, which is also an important consideration. And studies at the moment are evaluating whether we should be giving a second medication along with gemcitabine to see if we can improve the outcomes. And that's, th those are questions being asked in trials in North America and in Europe. And there are series of big, what we call post-operative adjuvant studies that are underway, that in the next three to five years we'll have some new insights mm -hmm. into whether a routine consideration would be using a second medication in the post-operative setting. I think the other big area where there's a lot of discussion, and I would say no consensus, is whether we should be routinely recommending radiation. So radiation is a little different, right? So we're looking to focus on any residual cells that might be present in the area where the pancreas was, the pancreas tumor was removed and try and maximize the risk of the cancer not coming back in the pancreas. And also, if you do that, theoretically, if you deal with any microscopic cells in the local area, you may maximize the chances of those cells not escaping to mm -hmm. other areas. So studies have been controversial. Studies from North America have suggested we should be routinely incorporating radiation. However, studies from Europe, which have been questions, questioned a little bit in terms of their design, quality control, and interpretation, have suggested that radiation may not actually be helpful. So in North America at the current time, we have a large study of which nearly a thousand uh, people will be enrolled. And here we're going to be able to fully understand whether we should be routinely recommending radiation in the post-operative setting. And Eileen, when it comes also to side effects, which is a major scare for patients regarding gemcitabine or other modes of treatment, what do you like to take to, uh, tell your patients? What do you explain to them? What's your approach? So from the medical oncology perspective, if, if patients are having a lot of side effects and discomforts, we're not doing the best job that we can. Mm -hmm. So trying to preempt as much as possible uh, side effects from treatment is important. So for example, we usually give relatively mild anti-nausea medications uh, before treatment. They typically do a good job. Uh, some people will need additional medication support after the treatments for some nausea that might linger. Common side effects of gemcitabine is tiredness, and, and that, that's one not so much the immediately after you receive the treatment, but a couple of days later, where people can feel run down, they may have some flu-like symptoms, and just need to take it easy for a couple of days. Other things that people can notice are a little bit of hair thinning, that's gradual and gentle, mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit of ankle swelling, occasionally a little bit of a rash, but for the most part, without minimizing the discomforts. This is a fairly well tolerated treatment for, for most patients and even when they've undergone a big surgery it's something that we can safely uh, get them through uh, over time. And Eileen, how long do you tell the patients that you're going to be treating them for? And before you even answer that question, what do you tell them about how reversible these side effects are? So the two questions are, when patients are asking, you know, is this reversible? Is this gonna stay with me for the rest of my life? Do I need treatment forever? Do we have a break in treatment? 
So I think it really depends on what stage of the disease that we're treating. So for example, if a person has had a successful removal of the cancer and we're recommending post-operative treatment, there it's a defined course, typically six months. For perhaps the bigger majority of patients where the cancer has spread beyond the local area and maybe have spread to the liver or the abdominal cavity, to some extent treatment there is ongoing and indefinite. And in that context, good symptom management and making sure that we're not having people too uncomfortable over time from the discomforts of treatments is, is very important. So the philosophy and approach is different depending on the stage of the cancer. And I would also say that the treatment approaches in terms of the medications and indeed combinations of medications mm -hmm. that we use are different depending on whether the cancer has been localized and operated upon or whether it's spread and uh, uh, we're looking at more at control and shrinkage rather than cure. Absolutely. Thank you.